For the most controversial engine to be put into Wrangler, the two liter four cylinder turbo, one month and 2,500 miles later. Here's why I personally think this was the best engine for me and why it could be for you too. I'm Matt from Dirt Road Cred. Let's jump into it. So I'm gonna tell you one thing, I'm not coming at this having owned no other Jeeps, no other Jeep engines, and I'm just a mall car that it doesn't really know what I'm talking about. Well, actually I am. No, I'm, I'm kidding guys. You know, I've owned a ton of these Jeeps. I've ran all sorts of engines, diesels, Hemi swapped vehicles, 3.6 Gladiators, JLs, even supercharged 3.6 JKs. So when I chose this two liter engine because I did factory order my vehicle, there was a lot of meaning behind that. Now the Jeep has the 392 out there. I could have easily jumped on that, built it, drove it around and used it for what it was built for. There was a lot of reasons I chose this engine. And in today's video, we're gonna get into the reliability, the transparency of why I think this engine is a great choice. And overall, some reasons why you might want to consider it as well. I want to tell you that I did have some initial skepticism on the 2.0 liter engine when it was first released in 2018. Now, I'm going to be like most of you when a new engine comes out in a platform, a lot of people say, hey, give it a year or two, let it see how it pans out, let it see how it runs and see if there's an absolute ton of issues with this thing or if it's a pretty reliable engine and you only have a few issues like all engines are prone to. You're going to have some lemons no matter what engine you decide to throw into a vehicle. Now, this engine was released for the Wrangler back in 2018 and I can remember when it first came out, I was definitely extremely skeptical about it. Back then I was owning a 3.6 JK with a supercharger on it and I thought it was the bee's knees. It was the end of the world and it was a great engine and it was reliable. Everyone loved the 3.6. Besides a few outliers, there were some little issues with oil pan gaskets and things like that on them. They were reliable, they weren't complicated, and they ran well. It was the same when they put it in the JL. They didn't have any e-torque. It was a standard 3.6 naturally aspirated engine and then they added the 2.0 liter which at the time was a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine with an e-torque system. It was an absolute ton going on under this hood. Not only did you have the turbo system, you had the e-torque engine, you had the electric motor up front, and then you had a 48 volt battery system up underneath there. When I heard all that, I was like, I don't know. I'm kind of out. That's a lot going on under the hood, under the vehicle. And it just seems overly complicated, to be honest. Kind of all that was shattered when we did a few reviews back at CJ's and we did the 2.0 liter versus the 3.6. On-road driving, fuel economy, off-roading. I will tell you, I was impressed by the engine back then. This is the only engine I haven't ever personally owned besides this Jeep here, but it is something that I wanted to tell you exactly why I bought it. Which engine do you like better? Eh, whichever one that takes you to Dairy Queen. <laughs> not sponsored. Now some specifications on this two liter engine. This is a cool engine and I will say it still makes a lot of power going on underneath this hood. The horsepower rating for this brand new 2022 is 270 horsepower at 5250 RPM. And the power this produces as far as torque is 295 pound feet of torque at a very low 3000 RPMs on the tachometer. Now I will tell you that is a very important specification right there and something that I was kind of alerted to right away when I chose this engine. I always felt like this thing felt a lot more peppy off the line. You know, when you're driving a vehicle and you hit it at a red light, I always felt like the two liter was quicker than the three, six engines that I ever had. Probably the biggest reason that it does make more pound feet of torque than the 3.6. And also it makes it at a much lower RPM. If you guys are considering something like a 392, that makes 470 horsepower, 470 pound feet of torque, if I'm not mistaken off the top of my head, but it is almost instantaneous. So when you're looking at that horsepower and torque right off the line, you're making all of it. What I like about this engine is that is making almost all that torque right off the beginning and you feel it right away. And as much as you guys are gonna rip me apart in the comments, I hope not. I will say that this feels more peppy driving than a 3.6. If you're concerned that this engine is not tried and true, it hasn't been out for a while. This has been out since 2018. And before that, it was installed in the Alfa Romeo vehicles overseas since about 2015 or 2016, if my numbers aren't mistaken. We have some on our lot at the dealership that were pushing 70,000 miles and still getting incredible fuel economy with having no issues at all knock on hard plastic. Now, all those numbers flying at you are great and all, but what I wanted to give you today is my one month and 2,500 mile review. You heard that correctly. I've driven this Jeep 2,500 miles in one month. Not only do I drive a lot for work, but I also drive to a lot of other places. So I've already gone down to the New Jersey Jeep invasion and I just took this to the beach last week and I had a lot of fun with this down there as well. Now, what I can tell you after 2,500 miles of driving with the Extreme Recon and the 35 inch tires, I am averaging anywhere between 22 and 23 
33 miles per gallon. When I tell you that I've never had a vehicle on 35s get that kind of fuel economy while still having great power, I will say I am thoroughly impressed by not only the fuel economy that I'm getting, but also the responsiveness and the torque output at low RPMs. I've come from things, I've had 36s, I've had the 3.0 liter diesel, which actually makes more torque than the 392 Hemi. And I can tell you, I absolutely am loving this engine. It's probably one of the least complicated engines you can buy on the market right now. This 2.0 liter does have a turbocharger here, but it has no e-torque and it has no 48 volt battery below the vehicle. When you buy the 3.6, if you want an extreme recon, you're getting all that. You're all the way under the vehicle, which not only adds weight, but it also adds a little bit more complicated pieces and components underneath here when you go to repair this vehicle down the road. It's kind of crazy to me that they've changed all this and gone away from the e-torque being in this engine to the 3.6 and kind of let this engine be the way that it is. And I will tell you, after one month, I am extremely pleased with it. It is not a 392 by any means. It does not compare to the 470 horsepower that that makes. But what it does do is get me great fuel economy driving back to Fort to work. Did great on the beach when I aired down the tire pressure and put it in off-road plus mode. And then it does great right off the line. I'm super happy with this heavy Jeep here and the 35s on it and just how well it does ride and perform. Now, when I tell you what my plans are for this Jeep, you're probably going to consider yourself as probably someone in that boat. I am running this for longer trips. So I plan on doing some overlanding, maybe going out to Michigan, upstate into Maine, all over the place. And I wanted something that I could drive for a decent amount of miles, be really comfortable with how the RPMs look in eighth gear, and then also still get decent fuel economy when I'm driving further. I've got a lot coming and some parts here, including a tuner all the way from over in Germany. So you guys are going to have to wait for that. Those guys have been tuning the heck out of Alfa Romeo two liters, and I can't wait to install that and see how much fuel economy we can get because there's a couple different modes. So now guys, it seems like it's popping off a little bit lately on the channel. We've gained a lot of subscribers and a lot of views. It's really cool for me to read and respond to those that have been around. Maybe you watched a video five years ago with me in it, or you're brand new to the channel and just enjoy the content. Definitely drop a comment below with whatever questions you have. Now, unless it's like personal, like should I go get this lump checked out? I'll probably be able to help you with cheap questions down below in the comments. But seriously, I am extremely grateful for all of you following along to this channel. And I can't thank you enough for making this possible here. Definitely hit the like button and maybe subscribe there too so you don't miss anything that's coming out. Now, until next time, I am Matt from Dirt Road Cred. Get out there and earn yours.